And we are delighted to be here on the SDG Live again in Davos. I'm delighted to be here with Richard Cortis, also known as Richard Wally Anthony oh. Cortis, who is an SDG advocate and also uh, probably the most creative person that has helped to make the global goals famous. And uh, we're in Davos and we want to talk to you about like why does uh, winning the hearts and the minds of the people matter when it comes to the global goals? And what do we see in Davos this year? So tell me, what, what have we seen or what are we going to see? What do we expect from this you Davos? I say first okay, that first. I'm not only a boring bloke with white hair, but that I used to write really good films with lots of romance. No, I, I, okay, so let's talk about that. to be there. No. Uh, wrote, wrote Love Actually and Notting Hill and Four Weddings and Mr. Bean and... So even if he says slightly dull things about politics, you should keep on watching. No, but you have actually done, <laughs> like, probably of, of my top ten films, uh, you have done probably eight of those. So let's talk about, wh which, is no, your no. Favorite, which is your favorite film? Uh, my that favorite film was a film called Girl in the Cafe, which was about international politics. So we can go straight back to the global goals. I love Love, actually, and yeah. For Weddings and a Funeral is my favorite, and I think that I'm going to uh, love and die watching Bridget Jones on um, number of But times. I am actually an optimist, and I do think that the thing about the global goals is that they represent a genuine, optimistic, incredibly carefully thought through long-term plan. You know, a lot of us get a lot of bad news in every day, and you say, well, is the world going to hell in a high cart? And of course it's not. There are amazing progress happening. There have been huge... Bill Gates says that the last 25 years have been the greatest 25 years in the history of human civilization, right. that there's never been such a cut in extreme poverty, that there's never been such a cut in child mortality. Uh, and so the optimism that's in my films is actually part and parcel of, of my belief in the goal. And I actually do think that um, we are very much seeing how the world is talking, it, it, even in Davos, how much progress people are focusing on as opposed to, you know, like the things that we, there is a certain optimism that we're seeing when it comes to having an organized framework like the global goals. And, um, and, and I do think that we have made an incredible progress, I think, that as a community yeah. seeing. No, I think so. I mean, when um, 15 business people are humans, too. That's the message of this thing. I mean, when uh, we, we did a campaign called Make Poverty History in 2005, which was about doubling aid from the rich world to the developing world. And I tried to have meetings with businessmen then. Men, by the way, they were all men. Right. And they were very depressing. Right. They looked at me, they said, this is a dangerous left winger, which I wasn't. <laughs> they really were. They were horrible meetings, and they thought they knew better than us. And what's so extraordinary is 15 years later, or 13 years later, huge number of business people are actually really seriously engaged because you can't make the world better without business being involved because yeah. business makes 70% yeah. of the jobs. Yeah. But if the world is full of climate disasters, extreme poverty, therefore no purchasing power, uh, conflict, then business won't be able to thrive either. So actually the relationship between a better world and better business is a perfect one. And it's great to see here in Davos that, it's, um, that, that thought is really catching on. And I think that every year you can see uh, it's almost like the snowball growing and growing and growing and having even more people that only not only are doing better and doing the right thing, but also talking about that, yeah. which, is, which is a change. Yeah, and also what kicks in with you know, business people is they've got a competitive instinct and actually you're starting to think, well, is my company doing the right thing? Are we going to do better than other companies at this, particularly in the tech world? where everyone knows that you've got a younger generation who are getting more and more interested in change in the world and thinking they're the ones who ought to do it. They're not trusting traditional charities and politicians as much. And actually, you need the tech giants to take the lead. It's actually we're going to be the people who work with you towards making sure that by 2030, the world has dealt with climate change and has dealt with extreme poverty and is dealing with injustice. So the trust um, barometer of Edelman was released today, and business have a huge degree of trust compared to other institutions all around the world. I seen people are saying, my employer is literally the, the, the one place where I can relate to, and I think that, uh, and again, it's... Well, that's interesting. I mean, for employees, 
in the context of their companies. Right. Yeah. So but what, 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 what is happening, and it's really good to talk about that as, you know, like on the global goals in the framework of trust is plummeting all around the world. I think that America lost the 38 points uh, from last year to here, very much driven by government, like trust on government, for both from the, um, you know, like the, ma the, the voice of the people, but also the, the uh, intellectuals or the high, um, you know, like the, the opinion makers. But the one, um, the one entity that is coming out in the report saying, um, well, there are two, there are two good news for us. The first one is that people are thinking business and CEOs are, are starting to come out even more because consumers are buying with their beliefs anyway. 60% yeah. of the people are not going to go, the millennials at least, are not going to go for a company that is known to be bad if they can have a choice of a company that has a heart and they well, believe actually, on it. Yeah, no, and I think also they're starting to feel their power. Yeah. So, I mean, it's at the moment happening in quite a sort of shallow level with, you know, when, when a company puts out an advertisement that people think is not satisfactory, yeah. and it's happened a few times this year. Yeah they go online and the advertisement gets pulled. So they actually realize that perhaps more than politicians who've got three years to be vote again, you're meant to buy that company's product again the next day. And if you're not going to buy the company's product the next day, they're in trouble. Right. So actually, I think people think that businesses are listening more to Carefully the consumer to the than they are to the voter. Right. And one of the things that I think is very important about business and the goals is I think politicians listen more to businessmen than they do to NGOs, to so, charity people. And, and, and the other actor that I thought in this trust barometer was interesting was the other institution that didn't fall, I mean, I didn't, it didn't grow on the trust, didn't fall down either, uh, didn't fail, was the United Nations. And the United Nations, it, it, you know, like what's going on down on the trust before, but that means that there is an opportunity, and I'm seeing it here um, in Davos this year, how much there we're building almost like an ecosystem of people that care and want to communicate and want to actually make sure that we're on the same agenda, that we're moving towards the same, you know, like towards the same issues, which mean in our business, mean making sure that people understand the global goals, not because it's a UN bureaucratic yeah, yeah. Uh, document, but because, as you rightly say, it's about the rights. Well, I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I've got, you know, I'm quite a normal person with regard to the UN because now I'm a UN advocate and I've spent a lot of time there. But five years ago, I knew as much about the UN as someone who doesn't know anything about the UN. You know, I, right. I, I could remember a couple of, I remember Boutros, right. Boutros Ghali and Kofi Annan. I remember those couple of names and I knew that they were useful in crises and I knew there was a security council. But I think as people think more, wow, the problems are big. I mean, climate change has particularly made people think this. It's not just my country. It's actually going to have to be an agreement by everybody. And I think as people sense that there are global problems, they're more and more thinking, well, the one person who can marshal this, they ask the question, who can help? And it's not going to be some people from Mars. And uh, the only people at our level is, in fact, the UN. The UN who has to listen to all the complicated voices of all the companies countries that actually yeah. has to represent people equally and I think you're absolutely right that when people are looking for global answers the only answer that they know is the UN right. and the amazing thing about these 17 goals is that the UN did the work and actually came up with and anybody who's watching and hasn't you know go and look on the global goals website and you will see these 17 goals and they're very very clear and you read them and you think that pretty well covers it, actually. Yeah. That's covered gender equality, that's covered poverty, that's covered climate change, that's covered conservation. You think, wow, it's a complicated world. There could be something. I'm glad someone's done the work right. and come up with the plan. So right. I do agree that I think it is a moment for the UN to really, and I think the UN itself has to prioritize the goals, right. too. Right. I'm trying to get the UN to brand each of its agencies. I think UNICEF, I think the dot on the I in UNICEF should be this little circle that I'm doing. I think the UN has to say okay. we stick behind it. I mean, it's quite interesting how Unilever, a company, used to have lots of little brands, but you didn't know who made them. And now there's the big U of Unilever so that you know they all belong to the same powerful, sustainable company. And I think that it's important that the UN does that too. So tell me, I mean, you created Project Everyone along with your co-founders, Kate Garvey and Gail Galley. What 
And, and you started this in order to actually get the Global Goals to be Famous and known and absorbed and in, internalized. What have you been most proud of on the things that you have done so far? And what do you think, you know, like, you're going to, and what are you going to do this year in Davos? And then I can, I, I can share with you some of the things that I'm excited about. Well, um, I mean, one thing we did is we sort of helped design the grid. So we helped make them a visual thing that people could actually see and understand and were clear on. Um, so you created the brand. Yeah, we tried We love to the brand of the on, global goals. The this brand. little circle. We love the 17. Yeah, yeah and this. And, but then we did a, the Global Citizen, other partners of ours, did a concert on the day that they were launched. And that concert went out on prime time TV in 100 countries. We've been doing something called the world's largest lesson, which is being taught in an enormous number of countries to kids so that it'll start getting fed in. And we're trying to say to all charities and all NGOs, when you're arguing for the thing you believe in, brand it a bit with the goals. And that started to happen. And companies are now saying, how do I judge if we're a good company? Well, I know. We'll put it next to the goals. And so, so your dream would be to see... You would dream, your dream would be to see it on the back of the cereal box or, you know, see like it on in the... the back of the cereal box. See it in the... Toilet company, paper when you're... In the company yeah. branding. And, you know, our big plan is to try and make them so famous that a third of the way through in 2020, if you could just clear a month in your diaries, anyone who's watching, 2020, we've got to say we're a third of the way through. What have we achieved? What have we not achieved? Let's move it forward because politicians don't last 15 years. Right. You know, actually, it's up to us to say to the new politicians, these are promises that the old politicians made, and to the old ones, get on with it before, you're, before you get out. That's fabulous. So what, what's the plan for that? What are you planning? Because you created something called the Goals Keepers. Goal. Goal. I, I love that. It's a great goal keepers. And it's a fabulous way to create a generation of uh, the, new, the next generation, like create an army of young activists. And I loved actually how it was curated and, um, and, uh, and it was about like making sure that we keep leaders accountable. Yeah, we're trying to recruit. You know, we're actually, we had this event and you know, Malala was there and Obama was there. And huge business leaders were there. And young activists, the person who started Help Refugees was there, you know. We're With incredible say, music and then all of a sudden so that you understand why I love that so much. September, for people that live in New York, is full of conferences and summits and so on. And I found it really refreshing. I came, out, came in very tired because it was two days after my wedding. And I came out really refreshed and sort of like more energized than when I came in. And one of the reasons was that... All of a sudden, when you were talking about solutions, innovative solutions, for example, to deliver vaccines, there was a motorcycle coming from nowhere, coming on stage, and there was, well, you know, like... I'm, I'm a childish person. By the way, if you haven't heard Barking by a guy called Rams, that's a very good song you should be listening to. So that's just a <laughs> little plug for a new British artist. Um, and <laughs> just randomly, but it's all part of the, the motorcycle. The there we go. Like, so what's your favorite uh, song no, then? We, you know, we're trying to make partners, and we're trying to make partners do more. I've got a, you know, philosophy in life. In order to make things happen, you have to make things. And I'd say to everyone who's watching this, you know, just look at your life and think, well, do I actually want to be involved with a big thing that is actually going to help change the world? And look at the goals and think that you could do something, do something, you do know, something, in your school, you know, in your school, 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 in your